Nope, you did not press rewind by mistake. I have actually put a camera in the back of the RV. Well, hello everybody. Today we are driving to St. Petersburg, Florida in the Tampa Bay area. But before we do that, I am going to pass by the gas station, check the tire pressure and then off we go. Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. Well, hello again, and yes, I also put a camera on the side. It has been over a month since our last uh, road trip, so I want to make sure all the tires are properly inflated. And uh, welcome! to the tri-camera setup, which is very much in beta right now, but eventually I want to have cameras looking in every single direction, maybe even a 360 degree camera for virtual reality, who knows. We're going north on Legion Road, and as you can see, traffic is pretty light on this uh, Saturday morning. Uh oh, what's going on here? Perhaps I spoke too soon, well, let's see what's going on. Fender Bender, perhaps? I have no idea. And look at all the traffic back top on the off ramp. By the way, this is Blue Lagoon, and looking back, we can see downtown Miami in the distance. The reason, or the excuse rather, that we are using to go to the Tampa Bay area is the Florida RV Super Show, but we are leaving a few days early because we want to explore St. Petersburg, Tarpon Springs, Clearwater Beach, Madeira, and eventually the cigar city itself, Tampa. battery on the Sony camera, the one on the roof, died prematurely, but don't worry, we still got the other two. And even though you've seen the Alligator Alley many, many times in my videos, I bet you've never seen it backwards. Here's the tall booth, $9 with our four axles, and now it is almost a perfect straight line across Florida. Quick potty break here at one of the rest areas and we continue non-stop. We even managed to outrun the storm. See you on the other side. I'm riding, riding with my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding Riding with my RV, my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah Catching up to us again. My RV, yeah, riding, 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 riding with Blue skies ahead. Well, hello everybody. Sorry if you get some wind noise. We are here a little more than halfway there, uh, near Fort Myers. And um, uh, this is uh, one of my favorite rest areas because uh, they have a racetrack gas station next door and they have awesome coffee. And by the way, we had a tailwind. Sorry about the wind noise. We made 11.22 miles per gallon with the new app that I got. I'm, I'm gonna show it to you later. Anyways, we continue. By the way, the Sony camera, it died before we hit the alligator rally. Uh, gotta do something about that. We continue north on I-75. And near Sarasota, we encounter all this heavy traffic and apparently uh, there has been a multiple vehicle accident up ahead. 
Hopefully no one got hurt. A few minutes later we are able to continue. About two hours later we are here by the mouth of Tampa Bay with downtown St. Petersburg in the distance. About to cross the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Hey, check it out! The Travado just arrived. The current Sunshine Skyway was finished in 1987, replacing an older bridge from 1954 which was partially destroyed when a ship collided with it back in 1980. The bridge is a particularly picturesque drive because the pylons and the cables are located on the center line of the bridge, giving you unobstructed views of the bay and the St. Petersburg in the distance. One problem this bridge has is its low clearance of 180 feet, which prevents large vessels and particularly new cruise ships from using the Port of Tampa Bay terminals. Today we are going to stay at the St. Petersburg Madeira KOA, but if you can please indulge me, let me show you a couple more views of the bridge. That overpass you see on the right, uh, that's the Pinellas Trail, and I don't know why the camera lens got so much condensation, but anyways, the Pinellas Trail, which used to be a railroad track, is almost 40 miles long, going from here, from St. Petersburg, all the way to Tarpon Springs. Here we are, St. Petersburg Resort KOA, uh, for a whopping $92 per night, but hey, it's winter in Florida and we want to be comfortable. This one here is one of the better KOAs, and it better be for that price. There again you see the Pinellas Trail right outside. In typical KOA fashion we get escorted to our pool through sight, and this place is huge. As you can see they also have cabins, in typical KOA fashion. We have arrived here at the KOA, the St. Pete uh, Madeira Beach uh, KOA. And it's very nice, but you know what? I'm gonna show it to you tomorrow because we're starving. Let's go eat. We are on our way to this area called John's Pass Village and Boardwalk, located towards the southern end of Madeira Beach. And it happens to be one of the main tourist attractions around here. It was originally a turn-of-the-century fishing village and now it's converted into this area with plenty of shopping, restaurants, boat rentals, you name it. Seems like a perfect place to spend the rest of the day. Here we are driving on Ocean Boulevard in Madeira Beach and it looks like we have arrived. As you can see, it looks pretty touristy and here we are looking for parking, oblivious to the fact that there is a large parking garage just a couple of blocks away by the Hooters. We continue walking along all these uh, touristy shops uh, towards the boardwalk where most of the restaurants are located and that's where we're going because we're starving. Here we are, 
Jones Pass Boardwalk. And this is the actual John's Pass, which is a break in the Barrier Island created by a hurricane back in 1848. It is such a beautiful afternoon, and the sunset will happen pretty soon. Uh, too bad the orientation of the boardwalk towards uh, the southeast doesn't quite allow you to see it. They have all this uh, dolphin watching and fishing tours of the area that depart from right here. And pelicans, of course, you have to have pelicans. Okay, let's eat right here. We have two loose cannon IPAs at this place called the Pirates Pub and Grub. And while we wait for the food, I'm gonna take the opportunity to do some time lapses with the new Sony camera. Yum, fish tacos and a burger. You can kind of see the sunset reflected on the glass. We continue walking around the boardwalk after our filling dinner, as the day comes to an end. And it is one of those few places where they let you walk around with your drink. Well, that was delicious. Here's a taffy shop. And there's Venus in the sky as the day slowly comes to an end. How about another time lapse? Here we walk down to the hut, bar and grill, uh, drowned by the live music. We love live music. This place is happening and we are lucky to find the two empty spots at the bar. And what a better way to end the day than having a Cigar City IPA, my new favorite beer by the way, uh, listening to a live band. Doesn't get much better than this. Okay, let's get out of here. How about an ice cream for dessert? Okay, I think we've had enough fun for one night. Let's go back to the RV park. Let's fill up the tank because tomorrow we are going to St. Petersburg and we will visit the Dalde Museum among many other things. So, good night. Good morning from the St. Petersburg Madeira Beach KOA. Let's check out really quick here the Penelas Trail which is right next door. From the trail we get very scenic views of the bayou with all these little islands. Maybe I'll rent a kayak or at the very least fly the drone later. To the other side there's the Bay Pines Marina which is adjacent to a mobile home park. Seems to be a pretty popular fishing spot too. The trail, by the way, used to be a railroad track. 
The campground seems to be almost completely full, as it is January, peak snowbird season, and by snowbirds we mean retired visitors from colder climates, as you probably know. Okay, let's make the half-hour drive to St. Pete, which has 361 sunny days a year on average, and it holds the Guinness record for 768 consecutive sunny days. So they call it the Sunshine City. I wonder if today counts, because it is a little more than partly cloudy. I am actually kind of surprised to find out that downtown St. Petersburg is mostly residential. Most downtowns I've seen are more business-oriented. Okay, let's park, and there you can see the Salvador Dali Museum, which we will visit shortly. Part of the reason you see so many sailboats around here is because here at this marina they have the St. Petersburg Sailing Center, in case you want to learn the art of sailing and go with the winds. Is that an anhinga I see? <laughs> Skirt him away. We are also very close here to the Albert Witted Airport. Oh, by the way, little known fact, St. Petersburg is recognized as the birthplace of scheduled commercial airline flight, dating all the way back to 1914. In the distance, across the bay, we can see downtown Tampa. And the construction area you see, that used to be the pier. A nice tourist trap which was demolished and is now under reconstruction. Hello, Pelican. Hello, other Pelican. By the way, this is uh, the Men's Landing Park, located at the site of the first railroad pier in the city, built back in 1889 by one Peter de Mens, a Russian nobleman. We wanted to check out uh, Central Avenue, where all the action is, but it is all under construction, so let's go to the Dali Museum first, and then we'll have a late lunch on the other side of the construction site. The Dali has the largest collection of Salvador Dali works outside of Europe and it is listed as the number one attraction here in St. Petersburg. Before diving in, let's take a stroll along the gardens. This here is the Wish Tree, where people write their wishes on the back of uh, the museum admission wristbands and then tie them here to the tree. There is also a labyrinth, which is supposed to encourage meditation and reflection. It does have a small wish tree in the center, by the way. Okay, let's go into the museum. But before, let's hydrate. The museum is very nicely laid out, more or less chronologically, at first showing Salvador Dali's early works, uh, which leaned more towards the Impressionism and the Post-Impressionism, and then we dive into his forte, Surrealism. The museum, as you can see, it is pretty crowded on this Sunday. Here they also have the second largest collection of Dali's masterworks, which are the very large paintings. There's the famous painting of Gala contemplating the Mediterranean Sea, which from a distance looks like Abraham Lincoln, but as you get closer, you realize it is a nude of Dali's wife, Gala, from behind. And it was inspired by a low-resolution computer-generated photo of Lincoln that Dali saw in 1973. This is the famous lobster phone. I'm 
telling you, this guy was nuts. Atmospheric skull sodomizing a grand piano. No comment. And here's one of his masterworks, The Discovery of America. There is also a photo gallery, with mostly pictures taken during the 50s and 60s. The architecture of the building was also inspired by the works of Salvador Dali. Here you see the Enigma glass dome from the inside and a very nice view of the waterfront. Here we also get our tickets for a virtual reality presentation that we'll see later. How about some more hydration while we wait? And here we are. It is called Dreams of Dali. And inside the virtual reality world you get to explore some of Dali's works in 3D. I found the presentation to be a little low resolution, but perhaps the system wasn't well calibrated. It was still really good. The Ecumenical Council, in which Gala, Dali's wife, and the genius himself appear. In 1954, Dali recreated his 1931 masterpiece The Persistence of Memory as The Disintegration of the Persistence of Memory. Inspired by the age of quantum mechanics, it represents the breakdown of matter into atoms, among other things. With that, let's say goodbye to the museum. But before that, let me take a picture with Dali's mustache. By the way, all these rocks, and the largest one was actually brought from Catalonia, Spain, are representative of the Costa Brava, the coastal Catalonian landscape where Dali grew up. I don't know what it is about that building over there, but I like it a lot. Perhaps it reminds me of some of the newer Miami architecture. I don't know. Let's drive around all this Central Avenue construction and find parking on the other side. As you can see, this area is much more lively and it is actually hard to make a decision on where to eat. We eventually decide to eat at this place because it has live music but we sit down for five, six, seven minutes and no one acknowledges us. So we get up and eventually end up at the oyster bar. Here we have my new favorite, the Cigar City Hialai IPA and the seafood slider appetizer and some smoked fish dip, very nice. We continue on Central Avenue, going west, in order to explore a little more. This is where the art scene is supposed to be. This white building to the left is the Morian Arts Center, which features the Chiluli Collection. It has on display glass art by world-renowned artist Del Chiluli, most famous for the Fiori di Como, which hangs off the ceiling of the Bellagio Hotel lobby in Las Vegas. Let's drive back on Central Avenue for a little bit. Our next stop is the Roser Park Historic District which dates back to the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. 
Uh oh, I think we have made a wrong turn. The GPS lady is taking us on all these deserted back alleys. Let's retrace our steps here and find our bearings. This to the right, right here, is the also historic Greenwood Cemetery. Okay, here, now I think we are at the right place. Very nice historic homes on both sides of the street. Everything looks kind of deserted though, and a lot of properties are for sale. I mean, we would love to linger and explore a little bit more by foot, perhaps. But it is getting late, and the periphery of the neighborhood looked a little sketchy, so we are going to call it a night and explore this in more detail some other day, perhaps. Isn't this the alley where we got lost a few minutes ago? Yeah, the GPS lies. Let's return to our temporary accommodations at the St. Pete KOA. There's the Panelas Trail overpass to the right. And take a look at that sunset. Wow. Of course, we've only scratched the surface here in St. Petersburg, but something tells me we'll be back soon. At night, we tried to start a fire with limited success. I thought we had it going for a while, but all of a sudden, it starts dying. Slowly, until it dies completely. Maybe the wood was bad. Oh well, that didn't work. <laughs> Morning from the St. Petersburg Madeira Beach Campground. Hello, everybody. We're going to drive about 30 miles north to the northernmost point of Pinellas County. And here we are, Tarpon Springs. A lot of Greek immigrants arrived here during the 1890s to work on the emerging sponge industry. And today, well, they have like the highest percentage of Greek Americans of any city in the United States. It is known as the sponge capital of the world. Let's explore the historic downtown here, which is somewhat deserted on this Monday morning. It is a holiday. It is actually quite picturesque. One of the main landmarks here is the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral. It was completed in 1943. The cathedral actually replaced the church built in 1907. It was built with marble from Greece, Czechoslovakian chandeliers, and it has 23 stained glass windows. Whew. They have an annual epiphany celebration in which teenage boys dive into the nearby spring bayou to retrieve a cross. They even have a statue of an epiphany diver in front of the church to prove it. We continue walking towards the aforementioned Spring Bayou and here's the 1910 Inn, which is a bed and breakfast. And 
here's Spring Bayou, surrounded by this nice park, and the streets lined up with all these historic homes. At the center of it all, uh, there's this World War II memorial. The park is actually very nice, very peaceful, with all these Spanish moss-draped oak trees. Too bad it is a gray, gloomy day, but hey, at least it is not raining. I am pretty sure that this is the spot where they do the epiphany ceremony. A lot of these houses are for sale, by the way, fully restored, just in case you want to buy one. And that over there, that is the cultural center. Let's get back in the car. We're gonna go to the historic sponge docks and find something to eat while we're there. But before we do that, let's drive around the Spring Bayou a little bit. And here we are, the historic sponge docks. They seem to be having some kind of arts and craft festival, so lucky for us. Uh, let's find parking. Parking is $5, by the way. This is actually the area where the sponge industry originally began and helped to build this Greek community. It is nowadays very commercialized and touristy, with places like this, the Spongerama. They are supposed to have the world's finest sponges, and I was actually tempted to buy one, but they're pricey and I'm probably never gonna use it, so I decided against it. They have all these old boats docked here and some quirky stuff. More sponges. Sponges everywhere. Okay, let's check out the Arts and Crafts Festival while we're here. I mean, it is on the main drag, so it is unavoidable. Yay, live music. Is that a Cuban flag I see? <laughs> Dreams of Cuba, hand-rolled cigars. And it, it looks like they have Cuban coffee too. Este es que yo había visto. Here's the famous Halas restaurant and bakery. A family owned since 1970. Yeah, I think we're coming back for lunch. We continue walking towards the end of the festival. Okay, my stomach is starting to growl, so let's go eat. The restaurant is still somewhat empty. I mean, it is early, it's around noon. We begin with a generously served glass of house wine and a saganaki for appetizer, which is this flamed cheese. Mm, very delicious. <laughs> Yum! We have the signature gyro or gyro uh, for the main course as the restaurant gets a little more crowded and a baklava for dessert. Mm, very satisfying and not too pricey considering it is a touristy area. 
We finish it off with an espresso at the bakery. And we buy some sweets for later. some delicious food at Hela's Greek restaurant and uh, I even got a, a box of sweets of Greek desserts for later. Our next stop is Wall Spring Park. In the 1920s, the park and the natural spring used to be a health spa known as the Health Springs. There is an observation tower at the end that I'm really looking forward to see, you know, get a bird's eye view. It is overall a nice, relaxing park with all this Spanish moss and uh, this boardwalk. But there's nothing really unique about it, if you know what I mean. And the observation tower, by the way, is closed for renovations, so <laughs> there we go. Well, it wasn't that tall anyways. Check out the fish. <laughs> Nature, man. And this is the view from one of the fishing piers. Okay, let's continue. The highlight definitely was that flying fish, or whatever that was. But before we leave, let me show you the actual spring here. Our next stop is the city of Dunedin. First of all, let's check out the Dunedin Causeway, which takes you to the Honeymoon Island State Park. It seems to be a nice place here, with you know, what seems to be mostly locals come to relax, fish, paddleboard, or just chill by the beach. At the end of the road, we encounter Honeymoon Island State Park, but I don't think the few minutes that we intend to be in there will justify the entrance fee, so another time, perhaps. Let's go back to the causeway. I actually wanted to park here and fly the drone, but guess what happened? I forgot to bring the controller, so there goes that. It is such a gloomy day, and don't be misled by that. The temperature is actually quite warm, it's probably high 70s, 80. <laughs> okay, I think it is time to go. Let's go to downtown Dunedin to check it out, and I hear there's a famous brewery there too. Here we are. We park here by Pioneer Park. Uh, 
Okay, let's walk around a little bit. Yes, let's explore. Here we encounter once again the Pinellas Trail, uh, which goes all the way from Tarpon Springs back to St. Petersburg. This city actually stands out for its unobstructed views of the intercoastal waterway, which we'll see soon enough, and the absence of any chain stores or franchise restaurants. Everything seems to be local, which is a good thing. Chica Boom Room. You gotta love that crosswalk. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the pier at the end of the marina and hang out with the Enhingas and the Pelicans. That's Clearwater Beach across the intercoastal. Heckle and Jekyll here. Fly, Pelican, fly! Let's continue. Yep, an El Camino. Next, we're gonna go to Florida's oldest craft microbrewery, established in 1995. Yeah, way before craft beer was a thing. We have the Piper's Pale Ale, and the place well, is pretty chill. Lots of patrons that look like regulars, actually. Next up, Clearwater Beach. We drive south on Edgewater Drive, which is a pretty scenic drive actually, with the intercoastal to our right, and all these probably rather pricey properties to the left. Here we are, downtown Clearwater. Soon we will take the causeway towards the beach on the barrier island. Here we are, the causeway. This is supposed to be one of the nicest beaches in Florida, so we're dying to check it out. Too bad we forgot to bring our bathing suits. Actually, it doesn't matter. The water is probably too cold here in mid-January. We're going to arrive here just in time for the sunset. And apparently they do have some kind of sunset celebration, you know, like they do in Fort Myers and Key West. By the way, remember how gloomy it was earlier? It turned into a gorgeous afternoon. Beautiful weather here to end our day. Let's park right here and walk to the pier. It is called Sunsets at Pier 60 Daily Festival. Mm -hmm. 
And they do have street performers, of course. Hey Danny, do us a favor. Give us more credit. Hold the hoop higher. That's too much credit. And here we are at the pier, Pier 60. It is actually a gorgeous beach, white sand and lots of it. Well, hello everybody and greetings from Clearwater Beach here in the, in the sun coast of Florida. We want to wait for the sunset, I think, and then we're going to continue uh, driving south uh, from here. By the way, keep in mind, you have to pay to get to the end of the pier, but it is like a $1 fishing fee, so not much. You also get to see the pelicans, and they don't mind posing for the camera. <laughs> Check out this guy on the weather vane. No wonder the weather is inaccurate. Hi, <laughs> Poke. <laughs> He's gonna get dizzy. All these birds are really friendly, not afraid of humans at all. You can tell they get fed by the fishermen quite often. That was close. Are they fishing? What's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. He looks happy. Okay, that's it. Let's continue driving south on Gulf Boulevard towards Madeira Beach to our temporary accommodations for this part of the trip. So much left to explore here, uh, but the day only has so many hours and this one is pretty much gone. Thank you.
I tried adapting the new Sony 4K action camera to my drone with mixed results. Right now it is behaving okay as we fly over the bayou next to the St. Petersburg Madeira Beach KOA. The first bridge down there, that's the Pinellas Trail. And here we're looking towards Madeira Beach, and if I had a zoom lens, I could probably show you Jan's Pass Boardwalk. See what I said about the mixed results? Sometimes I get this weird vibration when I throttle up. I think I'm gonna have to get that Mavic after all. Well, tomorrow is moving day and we'll be sad to leave. Good morning! Today we are going to Tampa. Wait, I forgot the camera. across Tampa Bay on the Howard Franklin Bridge. And that's downtown Tampa to the right. Today we are staying at the Super Rally at the Florida State Fairgrounds where the RV show is going to take place. So let's check in and get situated. By the way, we are only getting electrical service here, so we'll have to make very judicious use of our water for the next few days. Just take a look at how many big rigs are here. This is incredible, most of them diesel pushers, and we have our little trailer. Well, as you can see, it is like the blind leading the blind to get our dwarf parked among all these giants, but eventually we get situated. Yes, we are at the rally. We hang out at the RV show, which happens to be extremely crowded on senior day. It is noon, so let's make some Cuban coffee for good measure. And... Let's go explore a little bit, you know, take a quick tour to get our lay of the land and to see the places we'll be visiting during the next couple of days. First, let's check out Ybor City, which is a historic district founded in the 1880s by Vicente Martinez Ybor and other cigar manufacturers, and back then it was populated by immigrants mainly from Cuba, Spain and Italy. This was probably the original Little Havana or Little Madrid or Little Italy and it is very likely the birthplace of the famed Cuban sandwich. We'll revisit Ybor City later in the week. We continue by the port of Tampa, at the aquarium, at Channel Side, passing by downtown. We cross the Hillsborough River here and drive on the picturesque Bayshore Boulevard, which holds the record as the world's longest sidewalk. In an effort to avoid the traffic jam, we stumble upon the Hyde Park Historic District here, where the famous Burns Steakhouse is located. Here we got stuck in traffic again. Apparently everybody had the same idea. The neighborhood dates back to the late 1800s as well. This white building to the left is actually the famous Burns Steakhouse. It doesn't quite look like much from the outside, but we've been there before and it is quite an experience if you want to splurge one night. We continue south on Bayshore Boulevard.
And here we are at Ballast Point Park. From the pier, you get this fantastic view of the bay and downtown Tampa across the bay. Let's return going north on Bayshore Boulevard as the sunset reflects off one of the downtown buildings. Very pretty. We have dinner at the Wing House, which is kind of like a Hooters knockoff, and the chicken wings are equally great. Good morning. We are literally surrounded by giants. After spending the morning at the RV show, we have worked up an appetite. So we are going to go to the oldest continuously operating restaurant in Florida. The oldest Spanish restaurant in the United States and one of the largest in the world. Yes. We're going to the iconic Colombia in Ybor City. The restaurant is, as usual, very busy. They have a great selection of Spanish wines, but today we are opting for the Cava Sangria, which is made with sparkling white wine, a brandy, orange liqueur, and citrus juices. Mm, very refreshing. And they make it right by your table. We're also gonna have the Spanish paella, which is nearly perfect, if I may say so myself. As you can see, you can get lost in this place. It is so big. We are going to continue exploring Ybor City a little bit here, which is almost like a pilgrimage for those of us of Cuban descent. This area was like the cradle of the Cuban independence movement back in the late 1800s. Hmm, and this seems to be part of the Colombia as well. Next, we are going to hop on the Tico Line streetcar, which takes you from here to downtown and back. It is $2.50 one way and $5 for the whole day. And at the beginning, we have the car all to ourselves. And by the way, we have the crankiest conductor. She's not having a good day. We 
We passed by the Port of Tampa on our way to downtown, as well as the Florida Aquarium. The streetcar is a nice, quirky mode of transportation between Ybor City and downtown and vice versa, but I don't know if I would call it a tourist attraction unto itself. I mean, it is fine, but don't expect like a guided tour or, or the greatest of views. We are back in Ybor City, here by the Jose Marti Park, and now we are going to visit uh, some of the historic sites. Here's the Church of Scientology. The site of Ybor City's first fire station. Maybe the oldest fire station? Could be. And here it is, Parque Amigos de José Martí. José Martí was the Cuban national hero during the War of Independence from Spain. This park was actually donated to Cuba before the communist revolution, and it remains the property of the Republic of Cuba to this day. It contains soil from all the six provinces of the island at the time, and the statue of José Martí in the center. Normally you can go inside and explore, but it closes very early at 1.30 pm, and that's that. It was actually around here that Jose Marti gathered with the Cuban immigrants back then, many of whom worked in the tobacco industry, to gather funds and support for the cause of the island's independence. The current building here dates back to 1917, and it replaces an earlier structure that actually burned down. Something weird, it feel, feels odd. Like this uh, part of the city seems kind of depressed, like a lot of businesses are out of business and there's hardly anybody on the street. Here's the Don Vicente de Ibor Inn, built in 1895 by Vicente Ibor himself, the founder of Ibor City. Even the great uh, Don Vicente de Ibor Hotel is out of business. Check it out. It's gone. Historic Inn. Okay, I think we've had enough Ybor City for one day, don't you think? Check it out, the nearly deserted Tampa Bay Brewing Company. I actually wanted to come here, have a beer. These for lease signs are a very common sight in the area. And why did the chicken cross the road? Gem of Spanish restaurants. Yeah, we actually left the car at the Columbia parking lot. It's still there. It's a brand new day as we continue exploring the city of Tampa. We 
We are going to have lunch at this place called Yuleili. I think that's how it's pronounced. It is supposed to be native Floridian food and a brewery too. We have, of course, one of the local brews, the Alligator Hush Puppies, a Juan Snapper and Gouda Grouper, and uh, the Key West Key Lime Stack. All the food is very original, very delicious. Let's walk outside. This right here is the Waterworks Park. And here we spot some wildlife at the Hillsborough River. It is actually quite a nice park, very pleasant. Let's go a little further south on the riverfront towards downtown. We park at the Performing Arts Center and go for a stroll. Across the river, we can see the University of Tampa, formerly the Tampa Bay Hotel, as we walk along the river walk. Walk across the bridge, over the Hillsborough River, towards the Henry B. Plant Park. This sculpture at the center of the park is called Sticks of Fire. This magnificent building is the University of Tampa's Plant Hall, originally the Tampa Bay Hotel. The Henry B. Plant Museum is located on the south wing, and that's where we're going next. It was built by the aforementioned Henry B. Plant, a developer and railroad builder. Can you imagine this place at the turn of the century? Well, it is referred to as Florida's first magic kingdom. Imagine that. We take this self-guided tour of the museum, which highlights certain areas of the original lavish hotel. Here's an old guest book and tons of artifacts and memorabilia. Here we are in the reading and writing room. This set of paintings was originally located in the music room, which we'll see in a little bit when we visit the university side. The one on the left represents wine, the middle, women, and the one on the right, song. The following room highlights women and some of their pastimes during the time period.
And this is the original carpet of the hotel, by the way. There's also an exhibit uh, covering the importance of the hotel and the city of Tampa during the Spanish-American War. All these vases in this room were originally located throughout the gardens, brought from Asia by Plant and his wife themselves. Let's check out some of the guest rooms. Let's go next door to the actual plant hall of the university. Here we can see the elevator, the interior constructed with Cuban mahogany. It originally functioned hydraulically, and it is thought to be the oldest passenger elevator in Florida. And here's the music room that I mentioned before, with a replica of the paintings representing wine, women and song. Okay, it is time to continue. It is a magnificent building, isn't it? It is such a beautiful day here in Tampa. Last day here at the rally. Uh, we actually have until tomorrow, but we're gonna pull out today around noonish, I'd say. Uh, the problem is our gray and black water tanks read full and our fresh water tank reads empty. And uh, I know that's not accurate, but it's very unnerving not to know exactly how much you have left. Okay, we're pulling out. Tonight we're going to stay at the Brighton Seminole Campground, just west of Lake Okeechobee. About halfway home, seems to be a brand new place. Let me show you what we are about to encounter here on I-4. Some thought it was an eyesore. Some will mourn its loss. It is the Airstream Ranch, 
Just a few days after this video was shot, this classic American roadside attraction was demolished. Gone. Forever. And I just realized I forgot to put on my towing mirrors, so let's stop here for a second and do that. Okay, we've made it. It is kind of a weird setup. It looks like a back inside, but the hookups are on the wrong side, so... <laughs> I'm going to the pool. By the way, there's no cell coverage, at, at least not AT&T, but the campground Wi-Fi is excellent. And with that, another day comes to an end. Tomorrow, we go back to Miami. All good things come to an end. But before you go, if you liked it, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, remember to subscribe if you haven't and check out my other videos. You can also visit the blog at TravelingRobert.com, join the mailing list and follow me on social media at TravelingRobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding with my RV